What's up y'all, it's Maj. Welcome back to my channel where me, an independent artist, is taking y'all on a journey with me from zero to a million. So today's episode, we're just gonna talk about 10 things I wish I knew before starting my music career. Disclaimer, I'm still very much in the infancy of my music career. Like I said, this channel is dedicated to just documenting my journey from zero to a million. But at the same time, I have been making music for 13 years. I'm 26 now. And in the span of that 13 years, it was a lot of trial and error, a lot of failure, a lot of mistakes, and just overall just learning the game. So now at 26, I feel I am more well-rounded and more skilled and just more equipped with the tools and the knowledge to make a nice sprint, you know? So disclaimer, I ain't made it yet, but I'm taking y'all on a journey with me. So number one, it's gonna take longer than you think. Most people overestimate what they can accomplish in one year and severely underestimate what they can accomplish in five. So yeah, bro, buckle in, it's gonna be a ride, it's gonna be a journey, and it's gonna take longer than you think. And in retrospect as well, depending on what type of career you wanna have, you kinda want it to take a little bit long to blow up, quote unquote. Because in that meantime, what you're doing is you're just building your foundation, you're building your core audience, you're building the people who are gonna fuck with you for life. There's many times we've seen artists, they come and go, they blow up off their first or second song. And I think that's one of the worst things that can happen to your career. And now, instead of being an artist, they are more of a meme or a vibe and not necessarily an artist. And the things with memes and vibes, they come and they go. So it's gonna take longer than you think. So just mentally prepare yourself for that journey. Guard your heart, guard your craft, guard your creativity. It's gonna take a long time. Number two, your journey is gonna tie heavily with your self-development. Because who I am today compared to who I was 13 years ago, even though it is a 13 year difference, I would not have learned a lot of things I have learned today or even view the world as I view it today without going through self-development. And the thing with music, bro, when you really think about it, there's only so many things you can rap about. Especially if you're an artist that's trying to be authentic, all you can really pull from is your life. And if you're just the same person each season, there's not really much depth to that. But being intentional with your self-development and really prioritizing leveling up as a person is ultimately just gonna level up your music and your quality and the depth of your music. So yeah, like I said, bro, arm yourself, read more, journal more, talk with people more, cultivate those relationships that matter, and most importantly, cultivate that relationship with yourself. Self-development is key. Number three, starting off, and this was never really a problem with me because I'm more in love with the creation of music itself, but starting off, you're going to have to wear multiple hats. I'm sure you guys have heard that in many other videos, but it's it's just a fact of the matter. So starting on minimum, you're gonna need to learn how to record yourself at home. That should be, every artist should know how to record themselves, bare minimum. And then you can take it a step further. I make beats too. Not all my songs, I produce them. I like working with other producers too, but I have learned to produce music for the sake of if if I couldn't afford to buy a beat, what else am I gonna do? I'm gonna make a beat, you feel me? And with that, what you're doing is, now that you're well-versed in all the areas that goes into your music, you put yourself in a position not to be screwed over when it's time for you to start outsourcing. If you've made a song, you've been, been able to make a beat or shoot a video and edit it, and it took you, you feel me, it took you a day, like a motherfucker telling you it's gonna take five days to get it done, that's just not true. So you're able to have more control in that aspect and just limit yourself from being screwed over or having people play in your face. And also, it just expands your mind. It expands your knowledge. It expands everything. And it puts you a level above other artists. If you could go into a studio by yourself, lock the studio, and then come out three days later with a full album, fully mixed, mastered, ready to go, concepts already, visuals already, the amount of money you're gonna make on the back end is or it should be insane because now your overhead is low. You're not paying anybody else to do that shit. But I'm not ignorant to the fact that it does take time to learn those skills. 
but it's all part of the process bro you ain't famous right now you got all the time in the world <laughs> you feel me so there should be no excuse number four this one is very important number four your friends are not your target audience i repeat your friends are not your target audience i remember i used to feel a type of way when people i would hang with on a regular and this is back in college people i would hang with on the regular you go to parties with chop it up with do whatever we got to do from what it seems it seems like they supported me the least bro it does not it costs zero dollars to repost my stuff on your story it costs zero dollars to leave a comment on my videos it costs zero dollars to do any of those things but the people i thought would lead from the front in regards to just supporting me and helping me make it weren't really as supportive and I say that to say, don't get upset and don't let that affect your relationship with those people. Because at the end of the day, they're not your target audience and that's okay. So focus on putting your music in front of your target audience. Because you don't want to be that friend that just keeps spamming all your homies every time you drop, always sending your stuff to them in your DMs. And that shit gets annoying, you feel me? So just get that in mind. Your friends are not your target audience and once it seems like from your end it feels like they're not supporting you don't take it to heart you feel me you guys are friends for a reason so just, just keep that in the back of your mind Ooh, number five if you don't sound like where you're from your city is going to be the last place you blow up in now that i'm really looking into my analytics and really look into my stats i've come to realize for example i'm from bellflower california which is the 562 which is by long beach which is AKA Los Angeles. If you listen to my music, I do not sound like I am from LA. I don't make party music. I don't make gang banger music. And you can't really two-step to my songs like that. You feel me? I don't sound like I'm from LA and that's cool. So it makes sense why like I can't blow up in LA yet. You feel me? Now that I'm starting to really look at my stats and look at my analytics, literally half or even like more than half of my listeners are not even from the US. Most of my listeners are from Nigeria, South Africa, Belgium, and Amsterdam, shit like that, which is so random. But that goes to show because I have a global sound. My inspirations, for example, are like J. Cole, Drake, Kendrick, the GOATs, you feel me? They have global sounds where you could play their shit in any country. That's what I'm trying to aspire to be. So yeah, go global. Guess what? Local is included in global. Number six focus and pour into the people that are currently here i get it it's grind mode you're in a space where you're trying to grow it's all about growth 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 where can i get the next stream where can i get the next listener where can i get the next eyes to come fuck with me and that's cool and all and i definitely still have content reserved for just growing but do not neglect the people that are currently here do not neglect the people that had the balls to fuck with you when no one else did because at the end of the day once you really think about it music or like the music grind it's all about perspective chances are there's people that fuck with you but they don't comment or like like your stuff because they don't see other people doing it you feel me so once people do start you know engaging with your stuff engage with those people like if i see the same person comment on my stuff like four post in a row or like I see they're always liking my stuff or just being engaging with me I'm gonna follow them back and engage with their stuff I do things too where I would post like three snippets three different songs and I'll ask yo what song y'all fuck with the most even though I'm only getting like two to three comments I take those two to three comments to heart and that's the song I'm gonna go with the idea is is if they fuck with you and you fuck with them chances are their friends and people around them are also gonna fuck with you because like-minded people tend to rock together so focus on the people who are already here and that's how you really figure out your target audience and that's how you really start attracting the people who are going to be for you to come to you number seven this is a funny one but it's very true the songs that you're going to spend hours and days tweaking and trying to make perfect are probably going to flop. That's it's, it's, it's fucking weird, but it is what it is. Count the amount of times like a piece of content or a song that I did not think twice about ended up doing statistically better than the content or the songs. I actually took my time to create. So that just goes to show you how subjective art really is. So that song that you think is trash, bro, probably might be your lottery ticket. 
So don't be scared to share the good and the bad, whatever you consider to be good and bad, because art is subjective and chances are the song that you feel is whatever or that piece of content that you shot that was like eh, that probably might be the content that you know does a little wiggle room in your career you feel me give it a shot Ooh, number eight so if you've learned to record yourself obviously you're gonna need mix and mastering done so now if you're gonna learn how to mix and master yourself too save templates so once you make a mix that is undeniably better than anything you've ever mixed beforehand save that template so then you could use that session to quickly mix other songs that sound the same that shit is going to cut down your production time drastically so save templates and use presets presets and templates they work the same way it's literally to just shorten that mixing and mastering because honestly bro unless you really are an audio engineer i don't know what the fuck i'm doing when it comes to mixing and mastering i just push buttons till the shit sounds good so if i stumble upon some shit that sounds good make sure you save that template bro trust me number nine vlog early especially if you're in high school slash college because in your young adult years slash your adolescence years those are gonna be the time you have some of the most memorable experiences and how cool would it be to be able to vlog those and then five ten years later when you blow up your fans are going to be able to go see you when you were in high school and college you know just being your most carefree self like people want to see that it dawned on me too a lot of the artists that i love even though i don't necessarily like religiously listen to their music i just love them as artists and anytime they drop something i'm just gonna go check it out because i'm just so locked in at this point they all used to vlog early on. For example, Logic is a prime example. I became more of a fan of Logic by watching his day in the life videos. That made me a fan of his music after. And I think like a lot of people that fuck with Logic, fuck with those videos. So start vlogging early on, bro. People will actually want to see the process. And it doesn't have to be like a day in the life. Like for example, this what I'm doing right now is a vlog. It's just me talking to the camera. But what, I'm still talking about my music journey. I'm, st I'm still talking about music. So it's still interesting that my supporters will wanna watch it. It gives them a deeper insight to you as a person, as opposed to just your music. And if you're able to mesh the two, I think that's that's really where the magic happens. So that's literally what I'm trying to do on my channel. So if you fuck with me, hit that subscribe button. And the most important one of all, although music is a sport, the grind is not a competition. I'm gonna say that again. Although music is a sport, the grind itself is not a competition. So with that being said, in any sport, you should feel like the motherfucking man. You should feel like the best thing ever. You should feel like the world should be grateful that you even blessed this industry with your presence. You feel me? That's how you should feel about your art. And everyone should feel that exact same way because music is a sport. But the grind itself is not a competition. You're not in a race with anybody else but yourself. You're not in competition with anybody else but yourself. All you need to focus on is being better than you were the day before. Put them blinders on. Don't look left. Don't look right. Straight tunnel vision, bro. And just lock in on what you got to lock in on. Music is a sport. The grind is not competition so that's all i got today those are the 10 things i wish i knew before starting my music career if anything resonated if you fuck with anything i said don't forget to like comment share and most importantly subscribe break by break we out Yay!